either prior to or during the Great Galactic War, which took place 3,681 years before the Battle of Yavin, the Jedi developed the Zhuya Kos style. Clearly a variation on Form 7 lightsaber combat, Zhuya Kos has only been mentioned in the first issue of the comic series The Old Republic The Lost Sons. The only known practitioner of the style, Jarek Caden, was described as a living weapon guided by the living force. The Great Galactic War was the culmination of millennia of planning by the old Sith Empire, eager for vengeance after its defeat in the Great Hyperspace War. When the Sith finally invaded, the war raged for 20 years before being ended with the Treaty of Coruscant, though not before the Sith sacked Coruscant and the Jedi Temple. However, the war eventually resumed after a 20-year Cold War. Lightsaber technology didn't change much during this era, though obviously the weapon bore different connotations between the Jedi and the Sith. As defined in the Tor Encyclopedia, Jedi lightsabers were created as part of their training, and as talked about in the Designing the Light Side Developer Dispatch, they followed fairly graceful, low-tech designs. For the Sith, the lightsaber was drastically different in form and significance. Again pointed out in the Tor Encyclopedia, Sith had to earn the right to carry a lightsaber, and were supplied with one, though many would go on to construct their own later in life. Described in the Designing the Dark Side Developer Dispatch, the lightsabers carried by Sith warriors were typically rugged designs intended to take and dole out punishment. The weapons favored by the Sith Inquisitors, on the other hand, typically featured unstable and experimental technologies intended to maximize the weapon's lethal potential, but at the expense of safety. Saber staffs were also incredibly common during this era, being the preferred weapons for both the Jedi Consulars and the Sith Inquisitors. Notably, most of the Sith wielded the Jedi-style model with the lengthened hilt, though some purists, such as the Sith apprentice Tenep Kel in the Blood of the Empire comics, continued to favor the archaic design. Again described in the Tor Encyclopedia, Sith warriors typically trained in the Shicho, Shien, Sirisu, and Zhuya styles. As their direct equivalents in the game The Old Republic are the Jedi Knights, I assume that the Jedi combat specialists favored the same styles. The subclasses within both groups, the Marauders and the Sentinels respectively, strongly favored the use of dual blade combat implying that they specialized in Naiman, possibly even classical Zharkai. Zharkai was an ancient sword fighting discipline devised by the Yavshin swordsman of Atresia and was designed for dual blade fencing. It was eventually combined with the archaic Naiman favored by the legions of Letau and designed by the royal Mascheteros to create the modern version of the style which is devoted to lightsaber combat. Jedi practitioners of Zharkai typically wielded a Shoto short lightsaber in their offhand. Essentially a miniaturized version of the lightsaber, Shotos ranged in size from a short sword to a dagger and were favored as offhand weapons because the smaller blades were easier to control. Now, the circumstances behind the end of this old war against the Sith aren't known, but the Sith were evidently defeated, and they vanished from the galaxy. As described in the Essential Guide to the Force, in 2000 BBY, the Jedi Master Phanius fell to the dark side, instigating the Fourth Great Schism of the Jedi Order and reforming the Sith Order, declaring himself Darth Ruin. Detailed in the New Essential Chronology, what followed was the millennia-long Dragulch period, during which the New Sith Wars took place, albeit in fits and starts. A thousand years of continuous warfare just isn't a sustainable practice for any civilization, and even the warmongering Sith need a break every now and again. 
Over the course of the new Sith Wars, there were numerous battlefield engagements between the Jedi and the Sith, essentially large-scale lightsaber duels. The Battle of Misra in 1466 BBY was a notable Sith victory, and was also a highly successful application of mounted lightsaber combat on the large scale, with scores of Sith warriors charging in the battle on speeders. Briefly detailed in the Jedi Path, mounted lightsaber combat was basically lightsaber fighting from the saddle, and while it provided greater mobility and elevation, it also required the rider to divide his attention between fighting and controlling his mount. Due to the scarcity of Star Wars fiction set during this period, there aren't any established changes to lightsaber technology or to the styles. As a result, I am forced to assume that either there weren't any changes during this period, or what changes were made were either lost or improperly recorded. Then we get the 1010 BBY, when the Brotherhood of Darkness took control of the Sith, an event detailed in The Essential Guide to Warfare, and now we have plenty of sources, most notably the Darth Bane Trilogy. Described in Darth Bane Path of Destruction, one of the Brotherhood's major actions was the standardization of Sith training through the re-establishment of the old Academy system. The novel gave us a quick rundown of the various Sith Academies. Those with low levels of Force Sensitivity were sent to Gentes, Gamor, or Honiger to train as Sith Warriors. Moderate Force Sensitives were sent to Ryloth, Narshida, or Umbara to train as Sith Assassins. Average Force Sensitives were sent to Dathomir or Iridonia to train as Rank and File Sith and those with exceptional sensitivity were sent to Korriban to train as high-ranking Sith Lords and Masters. One of the most notable figures in the training and study of lightsaber combat was the Korriban Academy Blade Master, or lightsaber instructor, Kasim. As one of the greatest lightsaber duelists of the era, Kasim was a highly capable instructor, though ironically the primary effect he had on lightsaber combat was actually a negative one. In a wholly self-serving move, Kasim repressed the training and practice of dual blade fencing within the Sith, justifying this by citing the weaknesses of this type of combat, but in truth doing so to provide himself with an unbeatable advantage over his students, as he was an expert in the technique. As detailed in Darth Bane Path of Destruction, when students graduated from the Academy, they were provided with lightsabers, which indicates that the majority of Sith during this era wielded stock lightsabers. As described in The Essential Guide to the Force, the Jedi Master Pernikar managed to obtain the Sith lightsaber of his former student turned Sith Lord Wad Mortal. Pernikar submitted the lightsaber, doubtlessly one of the Sith stock models, to a Jedi armorer for examination, and drafted a report based on her findings. While the report focused primarily on the synthetic crystal installed in the hilt, Pernikar did make note of the weapon's apparently shoddy craftsmanship. However, not all Sith during this period wielded stock lightsabers. Notably, Kasim wielded a set of paired lightsabers. Paired lightsabers were two lightsabers which joined together to become a saber staff, a fairly simple variation. Kasim wielded a fairly standard version of the weapon, typically leaving the hilts connected and passing his weapon off as a saber staff. However, the weapon wielded by the Sith Lord Arcadia Calamandra in 1032 BBY was somewhat more elaborate. Featured in the novel Knight Errant, her version of the weapon combined the design of the paired lightsaber with the saber cane, and was essentially two lightsabers connected to an ornamental metal bar, allowing her to disguise the weapon as a ceremonial staff. However, when triggered, the weapon could then be wielded as a saber staff with a considerably lengthened haft. And when necessary, Arcadia was able to disconnect the weapons from the bar for dual blade fencing. 
In 1000 BBY, the new Sith Wars finally concluded, ending in Jedi victory and Sith defeat. As depicted in Darth Bane Path of Destruction, and detailed in The Essential Guide to the Force among other sources, the Sith defeat was brought about by the betrayal of Darth Bane, who tricked the Sith leaders into using the Thought Bomb, an ancient Sith doomsday weapon. The Brotherhood of Darkness destroyed itself along with a significant portion of the Jedi Army, and Bane, now the galaxy's sole Sith Lord, took the Sith Order into hiding, enacting the Rule of Two. During the war, the dueling-centric Makashi style experienced a major surge in study and practice, as lightsaber duels between Jedi and Sith on the battlefield were commonplace, practically everyday occurrences, as detailed in the Jedi Path. However, the deaths of the overwhelming majority of Sith, and the fact that any remaining Darksiders were smart enough to keep their heads down, caused the odds of Jedi being engaged by lightsaber-wielding opponents to drop almost to zero. As the Makashi style had only a limited range of application outside of lightsaber dueling, it was rendered largely obsolete, and its study and practice dropped sharply as well, and it became one of the rarest styles in the Jedi Order. All that being said, Makashi would still have its advocates, who argued in favor of the discipline instilled by the style, and others who stated their belief that the apparent lack of lightsaber-wielding opponents was nothing more than wishful thinking. In addition to the obsolence of Makashi in the aftermath of the war, the training and practice of the Zhuya style was also harshly regulated. As detailed in the Jedi Path, this was done in response to the psychological demands of Form 7, acting as the trigger for many a Jedi's fall to the dark side. From this point forward, only a small handful of select students hand-picked by the current Jedi Battlemaster were provided with training in Zhuya, and it was off-limits to everyone else. While Makashi and Zhuya fell by the wayside, the Naiman style gained, gained prominence, and as detailed in Fight Saber, by the time of Chancellor Palpatine's election in 32 BBY, it was the standard in Jedi training. On the technological side of things, Ilum became the Jedi Order's primary source for lightsaber crystals, established in The Essential Guide to the Force. Explained in the Jedi Academy Training Manual, a supplement for the Star Wars role-playing game, the reason for the Jedi Order's switch to Ilum crystals was due to the stronger and higher quality blades produced by lightsabers that used such crystals as focusing lenses. The Adagan crystals previously favored by the Jedi Order would continue to see use in the training lightsabers provided to Jedi Initiates. However, one of the side effects of the switch to Ilum crystals was the homogenization of lightsaber colors. While blue and green lightsabers were already extremely prevalent within the Jedi Order due to their traditional association with various specialized subgroups within the Order, namely the Guardians and the Consulars, these hues would become almost universal, as Ilum's geological sites only produced emeralds and sapphires. In addition to the homogenization of lightsaber colors, many of the more specialized and obscure weapon variants fell out of usage, particularly the double-bladed lightsaber. Specified in the Episode 1 Visual Dictionary, by 32 BBY, saber staffs were regarded purely as training weapons, and their usage in live combat was practically unheard of. That being said, saber staffs would remain the favorite weapons of the Jedi Brutes, a combat-oriented group who acted as the Jedi Temple's security force up until their destruction during the sack of the Jedi Temple in 19 BBY. Even the Sith were affected by standardization. As indicated by Darth Plagueis' reaction to a recording of Darth Maul wielding a saber staff, Maul was evidently the first Sith to wield such a weapon in quite some time. 
Now, the standardization of Sith lightsabers during this period does make a lot of sense to me, as the use of esoteric and specialized killing tools really doesn't mesh with the current Sith MO of concealment and infiltration. On the whole, lightsaber training and combat would become less and less important to the Sith, who mixed in various other forms of combat training, both the conventional and the esoteric, as well as advanced studies of the Force, all depicted in Darth Plagueis. That being said, almost every single Rule of Two Sith Lord was a master duelist on par with the greatest sword masters in the Jedi Order.